Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris Ashes to Ashes. So, first thing I want to mention, because I'm sure the astute among you have already noticed it. I am making slightly more energy credits now than I was at the end of the last part. The reason for that is because with the release of Stellaris 2.0.2, which is what this part is being recorded on, the devs made some changes to the maintenance costs of outposts and the like. One of those changes was, it seems to have been increasing it because when I outright removed it in a mod that I am running right now, uh, that I made, for anyone curious, uh, I'll probably upload it by the time this part goes live. Um, but when I, I removed the maintenance cost for Outpost, I was now suddenly making 87, I think it was, energy credits a month. Well, that certainly wasn't right. Okay, I almost doubled my energy credit income effectively. Like I said, that certainly isn't right. So I said, okay, what about a 0 0.5 energy credit maintenance cost for outposts? So I went ahead, plugged in 0 0.5, and okay, now we're making 41. That's closer, not quite accurate, but you know what? I said, screw it, it's close enough. Um, so yeah, so there is still maintenance cost, it's just not the one whole energy credit. For anyone curious, before I made the mod, uh, I was only making one energy credit a month. So one of the reasons I made the mod is because I wasn't a big fan of needing to pay maintenance. Apparently though, Outpost seemingly always had it, so it's just that it's more noticeable now. Um, prior to me making this mod. Um, but secondly, is that even a word? Whatever. Um, it was gonna hurt the AI a lot because the AI didn't know this change was coming and couldn't plan around it in the slightest. Um, and their economy is probably a lot worse than mine. And so with with the standard one maintenance cost per outpost, it probably would have bankrupted pretty much all of the AIs and most of them would have gone and scrapped basically all of their outposts and star bases that they don't have um, a planet in that system and some of them might still end up doing that I'm sure I'm sure I, I expect to see a little bit of blank spaces popping up for some of these people but most of them should be fairly stable um, with this mod so yeah like I said, the reason is I wasn't a big fan of needing to pay maintenance costs, but it seems they've always had it. It's just that they, like I said, made it more noticeable now. Um, so I brought it down to 0 0.5 rather than the standard one energy credit a month. The AIs might still be hurt by it, but hopefully they will be relatively stable and they won't basically all collapse into tiny one system scattered about empires. Like, for whatever reason, the Kelazan basically did in one of the earlier parts. Um, also, apparently, they must have done something to Unity costs, increased as a result of having outposts and the like, because I was not able to afford a... Um, or I was not able to select a new tradition before, but apparently now I can. Also, apparently I need to reselect Discovery. This may or may not re-unlock an Ascension perk, but to be honest, if I have to pick anything right now, it's not rediscovering this. Uh, also, really, they... Not a big fan of that. Making it to where you need to now do a tradition to get access to assist research. Why? But okay, I mean, that reminds me of the uh, Star Trek New Horizons mod, which does that. Not a big fan of it there. As a result, I don't really end up using Assist Research much because you have to select the Discovery Tree or whatever it's called in that mod. I don't think they actually call it the Discovery Tree. But for now, we're going to go for that. Decreased uh, upkeep for ships. Now, they did make a change. I recall seeing somewhere that... 
Galactic Wonders now allows you to make ring worlds. They removed the ring of life or whatever it was called that used to be what you needed to get ring worlds. Because I guess they figured now with some added ascension perks, you don't really have the space to be able to get Galactic Wonders, Ring World, Master Builders, because you basically need all three of those if you want to be able to build a mega structure in any reasonable time frame. Um, and so yeah, I guess they decided to drop Ring of Life or whatever and put the Ring World in with Galactic Wonders. Which I'm fine with that change, though I don't recall ever seeing Grasp the Void. So they must have added that in with 2.0.2. Um, we're not going to bother selecting that though. I don't think I will ever really need it, all things considered. Um, just trying to see, what do I want here? Because... None of these really stand out. I mean, I guess I can get Mind Over Matter. That'll get me Telepathy. We are Spiritualists. Um, that would sort of take us down the Psionic Ascension route. Never actually done any of the Ascension routes, but then I've never really played a game of Stellaris for that long, because I mostly only play when I'm recording. Uh, which kind of cuts down on things there. So I've never really had the chance to play long enough to get a, a uh, Ascension. You know what? Yeah, we're gonna get Mind Over Matter. Since the dawn of our civilization, tales have flourished of mighty sorcerers wielding powers that can only be described as supernatural in nature. These rare Karimbanongs have supposedly or could supposedly invade the minds of their fellows, lift heavy objects with merely a thought to perform any number of other magical feats. Until recently, these stories were just that, stories. Now, however, our scientists have finally obtained conclusive evidence that proves that psionic potential inherent in certain uh, Kerbinong individuals, although only a very small minority of our species as a whole seem to be gifted with psionic powers, their numbers relative to the total population have grown steadily over just the last few centuries. Whether this is due to some kind of sudden evolutionary growth spurt or because something has triggered latent psionic abilities that were always present in our genetic code, scientists cannot say. A glimpse, perhaps, of the future that awaits us. So some of our guys, actually all of our guys. Um, yeah, see, game, you said it was only in a portion of our <laughs> um, species. Yeah, that's everybody, except for maybe a couple growing pops that are still gonna grow into that, which, you know, kind of sucks for them, but that's their own damn problem, not mine. Also, uh, how much would it cost for me to get rid of fleeting? Uh, well, first things first, I do also need to apply this template to everybody. Log 49 months, still a little too long for my tastes. So I'm gonna have to say no, I'm afraid, game. You guys are now happier, though, because we are psionic. Um, and it would seem with 2.0.2 they've also made changes to what you have to be to be able to use the containment to cause a spell against a fanatic purifier. You had to border them, but now it seems you don't. Can I declare war on you guys? You have a cause of spelling on me, but I don't have a cause. No, I do have a cause of spelling on you. Okay, so it looks like they removed the whole you need to border people to declare war now. Um, not quite sure how I feel about that, because it does open me up to a decent portion of the rest of the galaxy deciding to say, hey, you damn rabbits that are going around murdering everybody, we hate you. 
and suddenly decide that they're all going to attack me. It's a very real possibility, and I'm not a fan of it suddenly being a thing. But uh, we're gonna have to find a way to survive. As a result of that change, though. And I think we'll be fine for the most part. I'm definitely gonna wanna work, though, on getting a second fleet up and operational. Um. Okay, there we go. Four cruisers. I believe it was eight of each of you. Sixteen of you, uh, Sander. And Fourteen of you this is our current layout. Now, are we going to build this fleet as it stands right now? The answer to that question is a no. Oh, I got two battleships. I thought it was only one. I could afford, apparently. No, that's definitely not a right game. There's no way in hell I'm able to afford that. That's their base. But yes, I will be building this fleet, just not right this second. Because our economy would not be able to survive that. I can say with a reasonable degree of certainty. Well, I guess I could start building it, even if it's just a very tiny portion of it, it's something. It's really all I need though, isn't it? Just a portion of it. Yeah, so actually, what does this do for us? Ah, increases output for all the research and, apparently, energy credits. That's actually beneficial. Evasive maneuvers initiated. Where? Oh, way up there, that's fine. Yeah, I'm afraid that's not the best way to try and evade. Just so you know. You're flying up to this where those malfunctioning units are flying to. Complete. So how about you just sit here and wait for them to leave? Construction complete. You don't want to be that guy that just got destroyed. Jump out of the system, set you to evasive, and set you to auto explore. Now you're not going to get yourself killed. Somebody just declared you was a rival. Aha! The commonality, commonality of clat. Who the hell are they? Ah, you guys. Rebels of this group here. You're both hegemonic imperial. What's the difference? Oh, you guys are xenophiles rather than xenophobes, but besides, oh, well, you're also authoritarian. Well, these guys aren't authoritarian. Okay, that's your difference. But you're kind of screwed because, well, you're entire, you're smack dab in the center of their empire, so everything around you is them. So you can't really do anything in terms of expansion, especially. Focus on getting the farm upgraded.
Construction complete. Uh, surprisingly, it doesn't look like the AI has really abandoned a bunch of outposts like I was expecting, at least some. But, looks like it was actually... Oh. Nikelazan have declared war on those guys. This is kind of the reason why actually requiring you to border people was a decent idea. The Kelazan, I'm pretty sure, can't do anything. Okay, they can get through you. They cannot, however, get through the Ubrak regime. And they can't get through me. So I'm pretty sure the Kelazan cannot physically... Uh, Okay, no up here. Okay, they can, but it does take a while. And I could also go ahead and just build an outpost tier on uh, Dokkan. And then they definitely can't get... Well, unless they fly through here, which, I mean... I don't think they would. We have mastered a new technology. Because I don't think their fleet would survive going through the Ravagers. Um, gonna have to say go for the cruiser hull points game. Yeah, they're not sending their fleet anyway, though. But they are starting a war. A war that they can't possibly win because they can't possibly fight it. You know, it's kind of hard to fight a war when you can't actually fight it. Oh, damn it, who? You, oh, uh, where are these guys going? Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think your best bet is to turn around and try and go there. But even then, I think you might be screwed. Ships have been upgraded. Okay, we upgraded our ships. They're sitting at almost 20k. They'll be a lot better once I have the particle lance. Construction complete. There we go, that's extra food. System survey complete. I think I am going to go ahead and try and build at least a portion of this fleet. I'm just going to hope it doesn't, you know, break the economy entirely. Also, I do like that they have now, uh, they changed at least your own, but I assume this is all friendly FTL inhibitors to green rather than the orange and white. It's now green and white. Actually, allies might be maybe blue and white rather than green. Green being specifically yours, blue being allies, and then the orange being, well, neutrals and maybe hostiles. Though they could also change it to red for hostiles if they wanted to. I don't know, we'll find out the next time we go to war because everybody has FTL inhibitors. How are we doing? Yeah, no, still pretty much the same. Not too surprised by that. I didn't expect the that stuff to change. But you don't have any friends. So, I mean, you're a decent target. I just kind of need a fleet. Being the main issue. My expansion is slightly limited at this point. You're only ever going to be used for offense. Or, excuse me, defense, not offense. Uh, I wish I could teleport my star bases around. That would be fun. 
but this isn't Legend of the Galactic Heroes where you can slap a bunch of hyperdrive engines on your um, star base and send it to go and fight another star base that's supposed to be impenetrable. Definitely wasn't impenetrable though. That series is getting a reboot. That'll be interesting to see how well they do adapting it with a reboot. And by that I mean whether or not it'll be complete crap or not. Where the hell are you going? Where's the MOA system? Because you're really going out of your way to go to this MOA system. Oh, right here. Oh, be my guest. You can blow that up if you want. I don't know why, though. Where the hell did you even come from, though? You're also going to MOA. Why are there two pirate fleets comprised of galleons going for MOA? You're done. Go to Auto Explorer. And try not to run into pirate galleons. Because you're not going to survive if you get into a fight with one. literally set their home base to that they sh that is not the fastest route there I'm sorry you really think that is the fastest route I don't I don't think going through a bunch of unclaimed territory is the fastest route there I'm sorry we're gonna have to say try again system survey complete I'm not going to give you an admiral just yet, though. And that actually pretty much hurt the economy quite a bit, and there's only a single one of those guys. So, yes, I'm definitely not going to be building the entire fleet. No matter how much I really want to. Construction complete. But what happened to the pirates? I saw them jump. I know they went to Moa. Where'd they go from there? Did they actually get destroyed by the thing there? They might have. Or I don't know, because it is also a nebula, so I can't actually see in there. Despite, I thought one of my things was in the nebula. No, apparently not. I would have to take one of these two systems to be in the nebula, and then I might be able to see. Because it only blocks sight out. Of course, I want, if I do that, Demis is not really going to be useful as a bastion anymore. It'd be better to have it right here on the border with both of these guys. Oh, you know what? Screw it. Go do it. And just because I can't, I'm going to steal the stuff around you. It's not like you'll do anything to stop me. Yep, you just go ahead and make your way home because you sure as hell aren't gonna be jumping. Okay, they're leaving. And you're going back to you're going to mow we yourself as well. Wonderful, and this is a nice little tech to have. But I kind of need the naval capacity, so I'm not breaking my bank. So while I would love to have this, because I do have, well, I got a couple of two worlds in the Empire, one of which I'm planning to colonize. 
Um, I yeah, I need to get down that maintenance cost. So now I have the opportunity to colonize one planet. So the question is, what planet do I want to colonize? My options are a size 19 tomb world, a size 18 tomb world, a size 13 tomb world, size 13 arid, 10 desert, 19 desert, 14 savannah, 16 tomb, 14 tomb. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say, gonna go for that, I'm leaning a lot towards that 19 tomb world. Unless I want to go with like a size 20 ocean world and my people are going to be pissed off by the f just the fact that they're living on it. Didn't we also have like a size 20 something continental or am I maybe thinking of a different thing? Size 10 continental, okay I must have been thinking of something different, okay. Uh, this does also have a nice bad amount of minerals right in this little section of the area so yep uh, what's the closest though oh presumably um, Impon would be wherever Impon is Yeah, you're technically the closest, but only barely. Uh, yeah, no, we're renaming it under our own thing. I'm sorry, game. Oh, and now you border me. But granted, again, it doesn't matter, because now you can declare war on anybody you want, just because you can. Construction complete. So, <laughs> it ends up being a case where it doesn't matter anymore. Now we are about to get the nice little particle lance. That'll be helpful for our battleships. The Omni Hub apparently are equivalent overall. Pretty much just because of their superior naval capacity, which isn't a reason to be equivalent in my opinion. Oh, how's your so-called war going? You have got to be shitting me. You have less war exhaustion than the Defender. How? You haven't even attacked. You have not attacked either of these rebel groups that you are apparently in the war with. Um, Puthan has had ethics changes. Ah, a new religion has formed. So, one of their guys is now spiritualist. Now they also have a militarist and a xenophobe. I'm half expecting that spiritualist to get killed. No, 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 you do not take that route. Jesus Christ, game, I understand it's difficult for you to take into account that yes, this fleet left that system, but it's heading in your direction. The sensors clearly would have told you that. Oh, wait. How the hell did the Kelazan own that? Okay, that's weird as fuck. Okay, you have entered into a defensive pact with these guys. Construction the Ubrak regime. Construction complete. Okay, apparently having an outpost inside the nebula still doesn't let me see what's going on in the nebula so that's actually kind of annoying 
because I would have expected that since it's only blocking outside that I should be able to see what's going on inside if I am inside of it. Apparently I'm wrong about that though. I feel as though that's a bit of bull, but whatever. I can't really do anything about it. Pirate signal, or pirate sighted in Lando, send the fleet to deal with it. Oof, that kind of hurts. And ooh, the Ubrak regime have declared war on the sacrosanct, or sacrosanct, Lithonian mandate. We have mastered a new technology. Yep, I'll uh, take advantage of that a little later. Even more physics research? I'm gonna have to say yes please, game. In the meantime, drop a particle lance on you. No game, we're doing that. I'm sorry. We will be fine. Why can't I do that? Yes, I know a ship of that same class exists, game. That's kind of the whole point of retrofits. Oh, is this a change they made with two... Oh god, why the fuck would you make a change like that? I shouldn't have to create a whole new class of battleships just to slap a frickin' spinal mount on the front. I shouldn't. It makes no fucking sense. Oh my god. Why? I'm hopeful that that's a case of a it's a bug and not supposed to be like that because I don't think that's good. But okay, game, we'll just have to live with this temporarily, so, you know. Seriously? You, you, why? I tell you randomizing you, uh, the first choice you make is literally selecting the name of a freaking Corvette that we have. God, okay, I'm gonna have to go and tell all of my battleships now in the fleet manager to retrofit to the Astarian. Because I'm not going to be apparently able to use the Cramder anymore because apparently you can't retrofit entire designs anymore. Makes zero sense to me, but I can't really do anything about it, so oh well. We find the game, we got quite a bit of stockpile. Construction complete. System survey complete. Yeah, you know what? Go there. Because you're gonna have to do some upgrades and that's where your ships are all gonna come from, so temporarily divert to the station here. Construction complete. It also has crew quarters for whatever reason I built them, I don't know why. You have nothing else to explore. Is a science ship going? Okay, a science ship is going there. <sighs> okay, um, I don't know, go somewhere, just hide. And I'm hopeful the game will properly understand what I'm telling it to do when I... Complete. Um, I don't know where their fleet went, but I'm assuming it went to MOA. That's where pretty much all the pirate Zeno fleets seem to be going. Engaged. Excellent. One of our is under attack. Okay, apparently I'm wrong. 
Actually, no, it must have just been strong enough to go th straight through Moa, actually. It's probably a little more likely. Yeah, we weren't exactly prepared to deal with that, but even if I upgraded this outpost with three defense platforms, it wouldn't have survived. You know, I am contemplating going in there and killing these guys if the opportunity were to arise, but that'll be a while. Take you guys. Oh, well, I'm paused. That certainly doesn't help. Construction complete. I'm like, God, you guys are really taking forever to get there. Yep, yeah, turns out I'm an idiot. I had it paused the entire freaking time. No wonder they weren't. No wonder they was taking them forever to get somewhere. They literally weren't trying to get there. forever to get there. Where's the second fleet? There you are. I'm gonna tell you to upgrade. Are you heading home? Uh, no. You are One still going to try and destroy all my stuff there. Which is annoying, but that's, um, that's all it is. It's an annoyance. I can survive. Uh, 50 months for the naval capacity upgrades. Construction complete. Oh shit, they're heading to Lando and I don't think I... Well, maybe I can. Let's see, our speed is 151 to 124 for them. Yeah, I think we might be able to make it. Oh god, no, no, we're definitely not gonna make it. You run away, you turn around, go back to Lando. System survey complete. In the Whispering Garden Nebula. If your garden is whispering to you, you might want to go and see somebody. All I'm gonna say because your garden should never be whispering to you. Construction complete. Resource silo. Yeah, resource silo. If there's nothing better to put there, just build a resource silo. Figure that out at a later date. Hostile Xeno fleet detected. Construction complete. You mean the one that's going into Lando? Yeah, I kind of already knew about that. That's kind of why the fleet got turned around. Well, you saw the ways to go. Let's go ahead and re-get that. Okay, and that doesn't give me another thing. I'm fine with that actually. And let's check the output. What's the best research world? Umara is the best research world. So let's drop a science ship there to assist research. What's the next best? Uh, looks to be Meridia. So you go assist research in Meridia. Uh, after Meridia, I'm going to say Nafilthi, however the hell it's pronounced. So 
you go there. You build a couple of defense platforms. Demis, you are no longer that. Somehow we are losing more money as a result of that change. Don't ask me how that makes any freaking sense, but apparently it's the way it's going to work. Because it's not like that was providing any naval capacity, so I should not suddenly be losing money, losing more money, rather, as a result of that change. But apparently we are, because apparently the game said, no, no, see, it's supposed to work like that. Fine, getting there, wonderful. How long has it been going for? Oh, 41 minutes. You guys got a little bit longer because I didn't realize. Then I had to spend a couple of minutes explaining why there was a discrepancy in energy credit gain. So, you know what? I think it's fine that it goes a little bit longer. I'll let this go until I research improved cruiser halls and then I'll end this. So that means you guys might be getting an hour long part. So enjoy that. Uh, the Kazam Citizen League is apparently superior because I guess their naval capacity is just that superior to mine. Um, and maybe their tech level is slightly better but still enough to be within the equivalent range. Hopefully, once you guys get into port, it'll fix the issue of losing a shit ton of money out of nowhere. Because that's really what it is. It's out of nowhere. I get rid of one freaking outpost and all of a sudden my losses increase substantially. It makes no sense. It shouldn't work like that. But apparently that's the way it's going to work. Um, you know what? We just researched the thing. Before I actually end this, let's try saving and loading. And see if maybe the game recalculates the economy. I doubt it will. But we can give it a shot. Nope, it didn't. I'm gonna have to figure something out because I shouldn't suddenly be losing a shit ton of money as a result of dropping one freaking outpost. If anything, I should be making more money as a result of dropping that outpost because surprise, surprise, star bases and the like are more expensive than outposts in terms of maintenance costs. Or at least they should be. So I shouldn't suddenly be losing money with that. But God. Oh, Stellaris, you have some of the weirdest freaking bugs ever. Because that's the only thing I can describe this as, is a bug. Suddenly, Starbase upkeep basically tripled. Actually, probably more than that, really. As a result of that change. And again, it wasn't supplying any naval capacity. I could understand if it was supplying naval capacity. But it wasn't. We were at 99 before, we're still sitting at 99. So getting rid of that should not have had any effect whatsoever. Our ships have been upgraded. Okay, upgrading the ships apparently fixed that slightly, but it's still pretty freaking terrible. Wow, these shipyards apparently got quite a bit of military power, considering they have no outposts. Having 2.5k is actually pretty decent for having no outposts. 
Um, but yes, that whole suddenly I'm losing a shit ton of money as a result of destroying a station is uh, definitely going to be hurting me. Oh, well, actually, now that I think about it, maybe capacity overload ran out. That, yep, that seems like it was probably the case. Capacity overload ran out. Now the game could have standed, could have stood to a better job of informing me of that. If I'm going to be completely honest, so uh, let's go ahead and resave this, so that I don't forget. Because if I didn't save, resave it, I would have forgotten. But that's going to be it for this part. Um, you guys basically sort of got a slight making up for the fact that you didn't get parts last week, but it's not quite fully made up. Basically, I made up for the lack of one part. You guys missed two parts so I still got to do a little bit more to make up for that one but yeah it'll happen eventually um but yes so that's going to be it for this part next part we will be I guess trying to fix our economy because apparently it's still not quite working apparently I do have to rely on capacity overload to survive uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing and I do have a decent stockpile uh, but I kind of want to, you know, be able to survive without it, if at all possible. But I'm not going to destroy my military for that. So we might just end up conquering a neighbor. Because, you know, the easiest way to get extra resources is to get extra land. And the easiest way to get extra land in the situation we're in is to conquer your neighbor. Of course... Given our options for neighbors, I kind of have to use both fleets, and one of the fleets isn't even a fleet, it's just a battleship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be it for this part. Uh, quick reminder, links in the description if you want to pick up Stellaris, and you, uh, affiliate links down in the description if you don't own Stellaris and you want to pick it up. Uh, they both do enable cookies, although they last for different amounts of time. Humble lasts for 24 hours, so you can click on that and then go and buy Apocalypse if you don't own Apocalypse, but you own Stellaris. Um, it'll still have a cookie enabled in the background to go and give me um, a 5% commission, I believe it is, for Humble, period, across the board no matter what. Um, Green Man Gaming, I think, enables a 30-day cookie, I think it is. Um... And that one, the commission varies depending upon whether or not it's a new account or an old account. Um, new accounts, I believe, are 5% commission. Old accounts are, I believe, 2% commission. Um, if none of those work, though, I do have a Patreon as well as a PayPal donation link down in the description. You can use either of the two. PayPal is more so for those periodic larger donations. At least that's sort of the concept behind why I have it. Um, while Patreon is for those monthly, um, smaller donations. Again, that's at least the idea behind it. Uh, with Patreon, though, you also get early access to all of my videos, um, or at least the ones that I, basically the Let's Plays. If something's not a Let's Play, it doesn't go there. Or you don't get early access to it. The exception to that, well... Not really even an exception. If it has Let's Play or Let's Stream in the title of the video, you get early access to it. Otherwise, you generally won't get early access to it. Um, except for maybe a couple of specific scenarios that might crop up if I were to do certain types of content. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, but yeah. So that's there as well. So there are, there are advantages for using patreon over paypal namely the early access to videos but yeah so those links are down there as well um i also have a red bubble um account for buying some merchandise um i don't think i have anything there stellaris related i do have some one thing eu4 related a couple things star trek online related um and then a couple of things for another series that I did, but I never really took off, and it was a pain in the ass to get footage for, and as a result, I ended up uh, basically axing it for, I think, like the third time. <laughs> oh, that series is not enjoying, or enjoying its time, but it's just the case. It's going to be stuck getting constantly canceled. 
Um, but yeah, it also didn't really get any viewership, so it doesn't really affect anything. But that stuff is still up there, because I'm not going to remove it just because I'm not doing that series anymore. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I will see you all in the next part, and I see now that our first fleet is over 20k, so that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, I'll see you all in the next part, uh, but until then, a goodbye and a farewell.